following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The sacrifice of Samael. We are going to explain <coughs> in which way the logos Samael works in the macrocosmos as well as in the microcosmos. To begin, let us understand what uh, in Kabbalah, in es esotericism, we call eon, an archetype. We always state that an eon is a master of the day. Actually, in Kabbalah, day is yom. It's a Hebrew word for day. So every sephira is a yom, it's a day. And it is because an ian is a monad, which is self-realized, and is an entity, divine entity, that channels the forces of the Ein Sof Or, the solar absolute. That's why in the world of Bria, which is the world of creation, we find that the Archangel or the Ian that is related with uh, Gebura is a Logos Samael. So, as we know, Samael is the responsible of this present root race, which is called the Aryan race, or the race of the Gentiles as it is said in Kabbalah, because the word Ariya from Sanskrit means Gentile. And of course, the book of Genesis, written by Moses, explains in detail how the superior forces relate with the inferior forces. And uh, the book of Sohar, which is Kabbalah, explains uh, the activities of Samael, the Logos, in the macrocosmos and in the microcosmos. If we do not know about uh, the positions 
of these uh, archetypes within the human body, then the, we fall into confusion and misinterpretations of these eons. Because remember that uh, the name of God in the Sephira Gebura in the world of Atsiluth is Elohim Gibor. In the world of Bria is Samael, the Logos, the archangel that channels the, the world of Atsiluth. That's why in the conjuration of the seven of the wise Solomon, it is stated in the name of Samael Sabaoth and by Elohim Gibor, Kedihens Andramelech. So this is something that everybody repeats in Kabbalah, but few understand <coughs> why we name Samael Sabaoth and Elohim Gibor in order to reject Andramelech, which of course are the forces of Klippoth related with Gebura, which in this day and age are very active. So, let us understand then that one thing is the Logos. We call a Logos a monad that self-realized and became a vehicle of the ends of ore in previous cosmic days. We call an archetype that element from that monad within our psyche, spirit, physical body, even the mind. So when we read the Zohar or any Kabbalistic book, we had to know what we're reading in order not to uh, make mistakes and to qualify the Ian or the behavior of the attribute or the archetype that we have in the physical body. That's why it is necessary to understand how the tree of life relates to the physical body. The first triangle of the Tree of Life, Keter Chochma Bina, relates to the brain. It is stated that Bina is the head of the king, a visible head. But there is another head hidden within that head, and it is stated that that is Chochma, which means wisdom. And above that head, there is another head, which is Keter, which is always symbolized as a crown. When we said head, uh, we take the word in the sense of something that is above everything. Well, we said that is the head of this uh, tree of life not necessarily a human head. But in the physical body, this is how it is situated. That's why we say, in order to synthesize, that Keter is the crown above us, and then the right part of the brain is Chokma, and the left part of the brain is Bina. Words which are translated as Keter is crown. Chokma means wisdom, and Bina is intelligence in Hebrew. Then we have uh, the right arm, which is Chesed. Then we have the left arm, which is Gebura. The heart, which is Tifereth the right uh, leg, which is Netzah, the left leg, which is Hod, Yesod is the sex, 
in Malkut, the feet. This is how you have to picture the ten sephiroth in the human body. This is how we will say these are the main archetypes that we have to self-realize. In other words, that we have to develop. Remember that it is written that the physical body together <coughs> with the vital body, which is the superior part of the physical body, form that that we call the Garden of Eden. So each one of us has his own particular Garden of Eden. And uh, it is written, of all the trees of the garden, you can eat. Of course, if you visualize the tree of life and all the sephiroth, every sephiroth itself becomes a tree, a fruit that we can eat. This is how uh, Genesis uh, chapter 2 Verse 16, 17 states, Of all the trees of the garden, you can eat. That is the statement to Adam. Adam, which is the man, made into the image of God. Hmm? This image of God, of course, is represented here in the tree of life. Because this tree of life Ten Sephiroth relates to four worlds. The world of the matter, which is this physical world. The world uh, of formation, which is called Yetzirah. The world of creation, which is called Bria. And the world of the archetypes, which is called Atziluth. So this is the representation of the whole universe. And we, the human being, must become the image of that. And that's why we have in the physical body, in the mind, and all the internal bodies, these archetypes in order for us to develop and become an individual, which is the image of God, or the image of that a structure that we are explaining here. So when somebody develops that, it is written. From all the trees of the garden, you can eat. Except from the tree of good and evil. Because the day that you eat from it, you will die. So there is an exception there. And this is precisely the basis or the base of this present lecture because uh, in the physical body these uh, archetypes this sephiroth magnetically speaking are uh, related with the spinal medulla that's why the spinal medulla is stated is a tree of life, which is in the middle of the garden. But in the middle of that garden, which is our physica physicality, we find also other tree, which is the tree of good and evil, which is called Da'at, from which we cannot eat if we, we don't want to die. So, in the Sohar, this master... Shimon, or Rabbi, as uh, we say in Hebrew, master, is the same, said to the faithful shepherd, because the faithful shaper is, of course, Moses, which in other lectures we explain represents the body of willpower, the causal body. This uh, Moses is a bodhisattva, in other words. That Tifereth it becomes a vehicle of the Lord. That's why we have stated that uh, every master 
has his own particular moves, his own particular body of willpower that becomes a vehicle. This is how we understand it in Kabbalah. But now you understand that this archetype developed in any master become Moses. But Moses in itself or in himself is an eon. Now you, you have to make a difference here. Moses as an eon is a master of the day that exists. Individual, is a prophet. But as an archetype exists in every single individual. And this is how we have to understand. One thing is the master, the prophet, the Ian of the day, master Moses. And another thing is your own particular individual Moses that you have to develop, that we have to develop. And that's why the messages in the internal plane, sometimes you can see Moses, and that relates to you. as well as other eons that we mentioned in other lectures, as Jesus is an eon, Buddha is an eon, etc. So, Rabbi Shimon said to the faithful shepherd, to his own particular Moses, you have given an explanation for the brain, the heart, and the wings of the lungs. But what about the two kidneys? What are they? The faithful shepherd replied, We learned about the wings of the lungs. In the Psalm 104, verse 4 is written, Who makes the wings his messengers? This being the secret of Hasadim, which is the plural of Chesed. He said, of course, as you see, relates to the right arm of the hieroglyphic tree of life. It's in the right arm of the physical body. This is how it is represented Kabbalistically. Hasidim means those that are related to Hesed, which means mercy. So, in the lungs, we have the winds. So that's why it says that those who are merciful, merciful are the messengers of the lungs, the winds. And it's called the holy ones, the Hasidim. And that's why uh, the wings of the angels, as you see, are always at the height of the lungs. Because it's the air, the wind, and represents, of course, the spirit, Chesed, our own particular individual spirit. The kidneys are the flames of fire, his ministers. This is how Psalm 104, verse 4 states, namely, judgments. The two wings of the lung with the two kidneys stand for the four living creatures of the throne, where the wings of the lung are lion and eagle, which are the Hasidim, and the two kidneys are the ox and the man, which are Gevura, and the throne is the heart that is in the middle which is the throne of judgment. You understand this, of course, when you visualize that the lungs relate to the heart and the kidneys also relate to the heart. Because, as in other lectures we have stated, Chesed is Abraham, and Gebura is Isaac that relate to the lungs and also to the kidneys. <coughs> and in the middle, we have the heart, which is called Jacob, which relates to the whole body because the blood, the circulatory system, of course, 
goes through the whole body and the heart is the center of it. That's why among the three patriarchs, or eons, in other words, masters of the day, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one, the main one, is Jacob, which is called Israel. Because indeed, Israel, of course, is in the heart. This is how you have to understand how the development of the two men comes. In relation, of course, with the myth, the Hebrew myth, which is called, of course, the book of Genesis. And many times we have stated that the book of Genesis is a book of the Gnostics, because related to that written by Moses. In this we are stating that Moses wrote it, whether it was the Ian Moses or the Moses of any other master that relates to the same meaning. Certainly the body and the two arms stand for the three patriarchs and the head for Adam. The right arm is Abraham and the left arm is Isaac, while the body represents Jacob within the body. The liver is on the right, the spleen is on the left of the body. These being the two children of both Abraham and Isaac called Esau and Ishmael that we talk many times in different lectures. The heart is Jacob between them. The lungs and the kidneys represents Abraham and Isaac. The lawn being water refers to Hesed, for the lawn draws in all sorts of portions, while the kidneys are fire, which cooks the seed that descends from the brain. That seed, of course, is the yod, the forces of the brain that eventually will become seed in our sexual organs. This is how you have to visualize the tree of life in relation, of course, with the story of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Esau, Ishmael, in relation with your body. Ishmael, in its scale, which is the, the first son of Abraham, it relates to the spleen. The spleen is that organ related in the left area of our body, which uh, uh, transform the solar light into red cells in the blood. And the liver is Esau, which is of course the firstborn of Isaac. And here in the liver, of course, we have uh, the, this organ which takes the impure and pure blood from the organism and distributes it. That's why it is written that uh, uh, Esau, the first uh, son of uh, Isaac, his kingdom was Edom or Edom, which means the blood, because Dom in Hebrew is the blood. So the power of Esau is the blood. But also in uh, that uh, Edom we have Jacob which is the heart. But the difference between Jacob and Esau is that the liver takes impure and pure blood. It has no discrimination. It's mixed. But the heart makes a difference. Takes the impure blood, purifies it, and distributes it to the organism. That's the difference of, between Jacob and Esau. It's in the blood. So the fight between these two brothers is in the blood, of course. Because as we always state, the very field of that battle is in the sexual act. Because the blood is the one that gives the sexual strength, whether in the man or in the woman. But Abraham, of course, is that Ruach Elohim that the Bible talks about that brings 
into the body, all of this inheritance from the head, from the brain, from that Adam, which of course in Kabbalah is called Adam Katmun, which represents the three primary forces, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And based on that trinity in the head, Keter Chokmah Binah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Adam, the seed of Adam, is placed in the pineal gland, with the, the, the Cartes states, is the seat of the soul, the human soul. There are two uh, eons, there are two masters of the day that we want to mention in this lecture. The first one, I already mentioned it, is Samael, which is, is quoted very often in the Zohar, because he is responsible of this root race, and of course you will see in which way he is also active in the physical body. The other uh, angel is Rahabiel, which the Bible mentions it only without El, only it says Rahab and mention it related with a prostitute that in Jericho helped the Israelites when Joshua was trying to conquer that city. Joshua sends two spies to Jericho and Rahab, a prostitute, hides them. And of course, this Rahab is the archetype in the physical body of the Ian, which is a master of the day, which is called Rahabiel, which sometimes in many books mention that is a demon of the sea, a demon of the ocean. But of course, it is only that uh, uh, master of the day, Ian, that controls the forces in the animal kingdom related with procreation, with the waters. As Samael also is that archangel that relates to the forces of procreation in the animal kingdom. Because you know, in Malkut, the kingdom, we have the animal kingdom. And the animal kingdom is controlled by the archangels. This is something that we have to understand. Archangels are related with the world of Bria, the world of creation. So these archangels in the in Malkut controls control all the species of animals. They are in charge of their multiplication. They are in charge of that statement written in the book of Genesis. Grow and multiply and be fruitful. That is a statement related with these archangels, especially Samael and Rahabiel, that are in charge of the animals. And when we are mentioning animals here, we are not only mentioning the irrational animals, but also the intellectual animals. The intellectual animals have, of course, archangels in charge of them, of, of the races. That's why it is stated that the archangel that rule the, the race of uh, Judaism is the archangel Michael. And if you investigate all the different races or sub-races in this planet Earth, Every single sub-race of the Aryan race has an archangel as the head of it, related with multiplication of that race. I'm talking here about the intellectual animals. Because I repeat, when we talk about archangels, they are in charge of groups, whether they are irrational 
or intellectual animals. And this is what we have to understand. This is what is called the demiurge, which relate only to the mechanical laws of nature. And of course, these archangels also, also relate to the superior forces that in the other lecture we call Haim, the human beings, in which we take advantage of, of, of its forces. The book of Sohar states the Torah, which is actually the Tarot, the Tarot, the law, came out from Metraton. Metraton, as you know, we always state, brought the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the 22 uh, arcana. And he brought it from the highest mystery, which is Keter. From the concealed head, which is Chokhmah. Of the king, which is Bina. So in this, we are stating the three parts of uh, that holy trinity, Keter, Chokhmah, Bina. When the Torah, the Tarot, the Law reach the left arm, which is Isaac, as we explain, meaning Gebura in the Tree of Life, the Holy One, blessed be He, saw in the arm in pure blood. that was increasing from there. That impure blood is Esau, meaning Samael in the other side. In other lectures, we explain that Samael, related with Geburah, has his kingdom in the liver. The liver itself, of course, reflects the kingdom of the father, which is in the brain. And through Samael goes into the liver. In the liver, each one of us has Esau. And that's why it is stated that Esau is a son of Samael. But we are talking here about the archetypes that we have in the body. In other words, Samael, the Logos, works in the animal kingdom through the power of the liver in order to give to the animal sexual strength, the sexual impulse to multiply. And of course, the sexual impulse descends into the sexual organ when we, when we have Rahav, which is a prostitute, a woman. If you uh, recall, we always state that the sexual organ is feminine and that the brain is masculine. We always state that Adam, the brain, is masculine and the sexual organ is feminine. So always Rahav, related with the waters of Yesod, the sexual organ, is that uh, feminine force related with the multiplication of animals. And that's why, of course, receive the strength of the liver in order to multiply. And you see that in any animal. So in this nature, thanks to Samael and Rahaviel, Animals multiply and they are fruitful and filled nature. But as it is stated, if any soul of any intellectual animal wants to enter into the human kingdom, and then he has to stop fornicating. He has to stop being a slave of the mechanicity of nature. And that's why it is stated to Adam. 
which is made into the image of God. Because Adam is not an animal. Adam is a human being made into the image of God. Animals fornicate, but Adam, no. That's why to Adam was stated, of all the trees of the, uh, of the garden, you can eat. But except of the tree of good and evil, you cannot eat as a beast. Because the day that you eat as a beast, you will die as a human being. And you will be born as an animal, as a beast. And that is precisely the synthesis of that commandment written in Genesis to Adam, which in this case represents in ourselves the brain in the physical body. So, when the inheritance, when this law descends from the brain, from the higher places, higher sephiroth, into the physical body, enters the brain, which is the pineal gland, and then goes into the left arm, which we are mentioning here in the Tree of Life, which is Gebura. And then some impure blood is there that comes from the liver. If you associate that with the two cords, Ida Pingala, the two nervous systems in the physical body, which are the grand sympathetic and the parasympathetic, which are around the central nervous system, which is the brain and the medulla, you will understand how the left arm relates to the right, the liver, and how the right arm relates to the, le uh, to the left of the, of the body, which is the spleen. Because these two cores entwine and cross in the spinal column. This is how the, the forces of these archetypes are distributed. So, Yod Hava, Elohim, which is the Holy Spirit, the Creator, says, or said, I need to refine and clarify this arm. And if I do not take off that defective blood, it will injure everything indeed. It is necessary to refine every defect from here. What did Jehovah Elohim uh, do? He called Samael. You see, he called Samael because Samael is ready with Geburah in the world of Bria, in the world of creation. Samael, who is the minister of Esau, above, he said to him, Do you want my taro? my law, my Torah, and Samael answer, or ask, what is written in it? He said, you shall not kill. Hmm? This is one of the commandments of the law. Since Jehovah Elohim, blessed be he, Skipped to show him the necessary place. He skipped to the commandment that he knew he would not be able to keep. Samael said, Heaven forbid this Torah is yours, and yours it shall remain. I do not desire such a Torah. He again beseeched him, saying, Master of the universe, if you give me this Torah, my entire government will cease since my entire domination is based on killing. And if I accept the Torah, the Torah, there will be no longer big wars. My rule is over the planet Marim, as is how it's called Mars. That indicates a spilling of blood. If so, all becomes void from the world. Of course, here, the Logos Samael is talking about his kingdom in Malkut among the chayot, among the animals. Because that impulse that pushes the lion, the tiger, or the leopard to kill in order to be fed is, of course, that force of Samael. Because that uh, archangel is related with blood, 
as it is written in the book of Revelation, that archangel, when appears, in order to fulfill the law of Chokmah, he says, appears with a vesture, dipped in blood. And we have stated always that Logos, with a vesture dipped in blood, is Samael. Well, in relation with nature, with the demiurge, with the will of Zanzara, relates to the animals. Behold a simple cat. A simple cat see a bird and jump on him, kills him, and eats him, or, or a mouse. And that killing and the spilling of blood is an action which is very common in nature. Cruelty, you will call it, but this is how it is. And Samael works under the left arm, above Gebura, you find Bina. Which is the Holy Spirit. Bina is Jehovah Elohim. That Jehovah Elohim, that according to the book of Genesis, created the planet, created the universe, because it's the Holy Spirit. So, in other words, Samael has the authority, or is commanded by Bina, the Holy Spirit. That's why he, in the Zohar, we are reading here, is talking with Bina, with the Holy Spirit, about this law. But this law does not relate to animals. This law is for the human, human beings. If Samael will as we said, okay, I accept your law, and then we will say that this Torah will be among the bulls, among the lions, among the tigers, the monkeys, and all of those, you know what I mean? Because this is the kingdom of the Samzara. But Samael refuses this. No, no, no. Why I will take this law of human beings to animals? And he says, Master of the world, Jehovah Elohim, take for yourself that Torah, that tarot of yours. I do not want any part of portion in it. However, if it suits you, here are the people, the children of Jacob, the heart, the children of Israel, for whom this Torah is suitable. He thought that he said about them some derogatory accusation which is the meaning of, and rose up from there to them. Actually, Samael, the chief minister of Ser, which means, this Ser in Hebrew means goat, which relates, of course, with the forces of sex, or the ram, in other words. So Samael said to him, certainly, if Jacob's children will accept the Torah, they will cease to exist in the world and will never be capable of ruling. The children of Jacob, of course, are the archetypes that descend from above into our heart. But then Jehovah Elohim said to Samael, You are the firstborn. Because Esau was the firstborn from Isaac. Did you see that? Isaac represents the, the Sephira Geburah. And when Jehovah Elohim says to Samael, You are the firstborn, he's referring to the outcome of the multiplication in the animal kingdom, which is Esau. But Esau is just that part of us which is animal. Because it's written that Esau was a hunter. You read in the Bible. A killer of animals, in other words. That's why it says Esau was a hunter before Jehovah, it says. See, this hunting of Esau, of course, is an attitude of uh, the blood in the animal kingdom. 
that we inherit when we enter into the intellectual animal kingdom. So because Esau is the firstborn of Samael, which is the one from where the Torah, the law, descends, because Geburah is the law, justice. He said to, to him, my birthright belongs to him, since it was sold to him, and I gave my covenant or my consent to give this Torah to Jacob, to the heart. The Holy One, blessed be he, then said, since you don't wish to have any part in the law, in the Torah, remove yourself from it altogether. He said, fine. You see, this is the first sacrifice made by Samael. He releases from the law of God all of this mechanicity of killing and spitting blood mechanically. Because a lion, when he's going to kill a deer, he's knows it before a judge he says, okay, do you allow me to kill this deer? And the judge says, okay, go on. No. The lion feels hunger, and by instinct, he goes after the deer and kills it and eats it. So there is no law there in the animal kingdom that will say that the animals follow uh, consciously. It's just instinct. So that's why he says, remove yourself from this law in order not to give to the human being, he says, the ability of killing just for fun, like any animal. And that's why the, the fifth commandment, which is Geburah, says, you shall not kill hmm, to the human beings. But you know, in this world, the intellectual animals kill uh, for fun. And they, they don't put the heart in, in, in it, which is Jacob. They just do it. Because they had, uh, according to their beliefs, whether there is uh, political or religious beliefs, etc. Jehovah Elohim said, Since it is so, give me advice. Jehovah Elohim asked advice to Samael. So that the children of Jacob will accept it. As you say. Samael said to Jehovah Elohim. Master of the world. There is a need to bribe them. Take light from the light of the, of the legions of heaven. And impart it to them. By this they will accept her. The law. And here is some of my light. So Samael took also part of his light and gave it to Yahuwah Elohim in order to put that in Jacob, which is Israel. Which I will give first, he says. This light which I will give first. He removed from himself the light that enveloped him and gave it to the Holy One to present, into, to present it to Israel, Jacob. This is what is meant, that the light rose up from Seir to them. Them is Israel, and Seir is Samael. So this is how their sacrifice made by, by the Logos. In order for this humanity, or these human beings, to understand how to utilize the force of strength, the force of power, which is Geburah. Because when you see, for instance, in the animal kingdom, the lion is strong and overpower all their animals in order to kill them. So in the human level, when we receive the strength of Geburah, we take it to the heart. And Jacob receives that light of Samael and transform it into right judgment and how to use properly that law according to God. In other words, the heart, which is the fereth, the soul, the human soul, it doesn't act mechanically. This is what we always repeat. Those people that act mechanically, 
If somebody insults you and then you insult immediately and fight, that is Esau. This is animal behavior. A real human being takes the insult, as the Master Jesus says, and understand, put your left cheek and the right cheek. Those are just things related to mercy and strength. And which you have to analyze the situation and to act as a human, not as an animal. And this is precisely the, the foundation of, of, this, uh, of this statement. Here is the other sacrifice of Samael. Give it part of his light in order for the heart to know how to handle it. Because we need it to. We need justice. We need the strength. If somebody, for instance, uh, we are walking in the streets and you see that somebody is attacking a woman and abusing a woman, you need the strength of Samael to make justice there in the very moment. Because if you don't have that, how are you going to say to, the, to this assaultant, stop or don't do that or, or fight against him because a weak uh, uh, human being is being attacked? So the force of Gebura, which sometimes is called Ra, evil, we, know, we, do, we have to know how to use it. Because that is the power of knowing how to use good and evil. Justice in the right way. Because if we have justice in the wrong way, then we are acting as animals. So to use the virtues in the right way is a power of Gebura. And this is precisely the doctrine of Samael. As soon as he removed Samael, or the animal attributes of that, uh, uh, of that archetype of the animal kingdom, he cleaned the bad blood. But this is, of course, something that we have to understand psychologically. He cleaned the bad blood from the left arm, that is Isaac, which is Gebura. He turned to the right arm, which is Ab Abraham, and he is Hesed. He noticed in it also defective blood. That is Ishmael. You see? Here Ishmael, Hesed, which is the right arm, is associated with the spleen, which is Ishmael. He said, this arm too, needs to have the bad blood clean out of it. The Holy One, blessed be He, called Rahav, or Rahaviel, the minister up on high of Ishmael, and said to him, Do you want my Torah? Do you want my Torah? You see, now he's offering his law, the human law, to the other archangel. Rahav, or Rahaviel, said to him, What is written in it? He skipped everything else and said to him, You shall not fornicate. You see, that's the sixth commandment. Which many scholars confuse with you shall not commit adultery. They don't understand that Rahaviel relates with fornication in the animal kingdom. And you will see how. He said to him, Woe for me! If that, is leg if that is the legacy that the Holy One, blessed be He, wishes for me to inherit, that will be an evil legacy in the animal kingdom for me, since it will remove my entire dominion, which is based on fornication. Hmm? Any animal fornicates. Since I took the blessings of the water, the blessings reserved for the fish, the noon, of the sea, as it is written. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas. And as it is written, And as Ishmael, I have heard thee, 
Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. And it is further written in another verse in the Bible. And he, Ishmael, will be a wild beast, a wild man. Hebrew patterns for that, which means a wild donkey. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all of his brethren. So, of course, Ishmael is the outcome of Rahadiel, also of the animal kingdom, as we explain in other lectures. Ishmael is the spleen, Esau is the liver. In them, we have the forces related with the blood that take part in the metabolism, in the making of the seed. That is the seed that Abraham takes over. The firstborn, of course, of Abraham, the right arm, is Ishmael, as you see. <coughs> Behold here what is written now. He began to beseech his master and said to him, Master of the world, two children came out of Abraham. Here are the children of Isaac. Give it to them. I mean, Isaac is the second child. Give it to the children of Isaac. He said. For the law is suitable for them. The Holy One, blessed be he, said to him, I cannot, since you are the firstborn. Because Ishmael comes from, from it, from, from ejaculation, from orgasm, in other words. And the law, the Torah, is suitable for you. He began to plead before Elo Yehovah Elohim and said, Master of the world, the, let the rights of the firstborn be for Isaac. That light which I inherited as legacy, thereby due to that right of the firstborn. Take it and give it to them. And so the Holy One, blessed be he, did. So in other words, he says that from Rahaviel, he took just enough in order for us to uh, uh, take from the sexual potency the necessary elements for us to be born as Isaac. Because Rahab, Rahabiel, which according to, I said, to uh, Hebrew mythology, sometimes they depicting him as a demon of the ocean, related with Leviathan, the power of the, of the waters. Of course, from Leviathan, the power of the waters, from the animal force that we have in the sex, we need just a little bit. We don't need to be like the animals. In order to fecundate and to multiply ourselves, we need only one sperm. Fortunately, humanity lost that capacity. And of course, that Rahab, which is depicted as a prostitute in the Bible, is the sexual organ, which you always state is a prostitute. But that we have to transform with transmutation, with chastity. So this is how you find uh, written in the Sohar how these two archangels, Samael and Rahabiel, talked with Jehovah Elohim. If you visualize the left arm, we always state that Ida is the left, which is related with procreation. And we always state that Ida is connected to the pineal gland where we find the atom of the Holy Spirit, which relate to the sexual organs. So, of course, this Ida in the pineal gland, 
which is related with uh, the Holy Spirit, with creation, descends from there through Samael, and finally reaches Yesod when we have Rahabiel. But this Samael and Rahabiel are interrelated. Because as in the other lecture we explained, Samael is related with a Scorpio, which is a sign related with water. And Rahabiel, the demon of the sea, as they said, or the Leviathan, the forces of the sex, are related with multiplication. But this is how you understand it when you read the book of Genesis. When it says, be fruitful and multiply, you know, animals do it, but they fornicate. And that is the kingdom of the will of samsara that we have to uh, understand. So in other words, these eons, or master of the days, angels, or the world of Bria, the world of creation, sacrifice part of them and gave it to Israel, gave it to Jacob. That means give it to the heart. Because in all this process, the heart is the one that takes the responsibility. The heart is that element that knows between good and evil, between pure blood and pure blood. And that's why uh, Israel, or Jacob, uh, is represented uh, in the heart of every single individual in this planet. And of course, the same thing that he did with Samael and uh, with Rahaviel, it is also written that Jehovah Elohim did in this uh, story, the same thing with the other archangels of the world of Bria, taking part of them and gave it to Israel, gave it to the heart, because the heart is the only organ in the organism, in our physicality, that know how to transform impure into pure, thanks to the activity of the lungs. There is, of course, in the world of Yetzirah, the world of formation, the world of the angels, this name given to Geburah, which is Seraphim. This Seraphim means a fiery or fiery serpents. This is how it is translated. And related to Geburah. I mean this, in the world of formation, the, the fiery serpents, the world of Geburah, are related to the blood. And these angels, Seraphim, are represented with six wings. The two that are related with the arms, that we explain, the arms are always related with the two patriarchs, Abraham and Isaac, these are the two wings of any angel. But in also here in the kidneys, we have the, the flaming wings of the seraphim, because are related to the, to, the, to the flames, to the fire in the kidneys. And with the other two wings, which are the wings of, uh, uh, of, of the arms, because one, the, one couple of wings relate to the lungs, the other couple of wings relate to the kidneys, and the other couple to the arms. With the arms, they are covering their sex, because the whole power of the seraphim lies on the sex. So you always depicted that the seraphim cover with the front uh, wings, the arms, the sex, but behind them are the lungs related with the wind and the fire related with the kidneys. So as you see, in the book of Revelation it is stated, I am the one that searcheth the hearts and the kidneys, and I will give unto every one of you according to your deeds. Of course, it is because the power of any angel is in the chastity. The kidneys in Taoism, we know very well that uh, relate to the power of sex. 
So when somebody is uh, chased, <coughs> clairvoyantly, you see above the kidneys two chakras. If these two chakras are white, that means that that individual is behaving chaste in the physical world related with, 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 with the kidneys. So they give us the judgment because the kidneys give the judgment in sexuality. And of course, the chakra of the lungs, or in other words, the wings of the lungs, are related with, with, the, with the air. This is how you understand that when the energy rises to the spinal column through the pingala and reaches the level of the lungs or the level of the heart, which is the same, we receive the, the wings of the angels, the igneous. We say the igneous wings. But these wings are related, of course, with the four elements. So the wings of uh, any angel of heaven relate to chastity in different levels. And this is how we have to understand about the seraphim. In relation, of course, with this Adam that fell into sin, because we, if you remember the book of Genesis, it is stated that Adam, the brain, through Hava, Eve, the sexual organs, ate of the forbidden fruit. And this is written how this humanity fell from the human level into the animal level. Because in the animal level, everybody dies. You are born and die in the will of samsara. And that's the meaning. So we fell from the higher levels of immortality, from the lower levels of mortality into the animal generation. That's why it is funny to hear people sometimes saying that they belong to a special caste, or caste, let's say, right? Special uh, race, pure. When everybody in this physical world is being born through orgasm, whether you are Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Taoist, all of us are being born through the orgasm as hayot, as beasts. So there is nobody here, as the Bible says, that is good. Good is only that that is created with pure blood of transmutation. That's why it is written, and God saw that it was good. All of these creations made inside of us. This goes in another level. So, of course, because Adam uh, fell, ate of the forbidden fruit, that's why it is written in the Zohar that uh, they became children of Samael, children of the orgasm, and children, of course, of Rahaviel of the prostitute, because these actions relate to these two archangels in the animal kingdom. But through the sacrifice made according to the Zohar in the world of creation, with this that we already uh, stated, the heart can give us access into the human level if we take advantage of these gifts that are given by the archangels. But the archangels rule the animal kingdom. The archangels rule all the groups of animals, intellectual or irrational animals, different races, different groups. This is how the archangels work in the mechanicity of the will of Zamzara. But each one of them gave part of their inheritance to the heart, to Israel, to those attributes which are human that are coming from above. In order for us to become not Hayot, but Chaim, meaning living beings. That's why it is written. Uh, let me read for you what is written.
in the New Testament. Have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God? Saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. In other words, if you visualize these three patriarchs related with these archetypes that we have, the lungs, the kidneys, which are above and below, and Jacob, which is in the middle. So in other words, God is the God of these three patriarchs, the three archetypes. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The God of the dead, of course, are those forces of the will of Zamzara. As you see, remember Genesis that says, the day that you eat from the tree of good and evil, you will die. So the souls which are submitted to the will of Zamzara are dead. They are being born and die, being born and die, and are submitted to the second death. Because if we are not being born as Haim, as living beings, eventually we fall into the second death, which is Klippoth, the disintegration of the animality that we have. So God is not the God of these souls which are submitted to the mechanicity of the will of Zamzara. God is the God of the living. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And we have to work with it as we explain in other uh, lectures. Master Jesus said, Verily I said unto you, Among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Master Jesus here talking about John the Baptist who are being born from a woman. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is Eliao, or Elijah, which was for to come. He that has ears, let him hear. You heard, of course, many times that this John the Baptist was the reincarnation of Elijah. Elijah, he said, master of the day, another Ian. John the Baptist was the reincarnation. That was was showing the way in order to become a real human. That's the meaning here. Why? Because in Hebrew, Elijah, you write it in this way. Yod-Heh-Vav. And before this, you write El. el This yod he vav Represents Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, which are the vehicles. Of course, in the human level, the Yod is Abraham, the He is Isaac, and the Vav, which is in the middle, is always Jacob. When you say Yod, He, Vav in relation with a human being, you are saying Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And you put El, Yao, means that man into the image of God, because El means God, El Yao. But, of course, in Hebrew, a prophet begins with He. Hanavi is how you said prophet. Hanavi. It begins with He. So when you said Elijah the prophet, you are saying Yod He Vav He of Hanavit. So in other words, in the sentence, 
el yao o el ijo de prophet, you are saying yod he bab he incarnated in the earth. That's why this great prophet, Elijah, which is an Ian, represents the many to the image of God, which is very jealous of the law. And John the Baptist as well is John, which is e ye o u a m s the seven vowels, represented the human being. So it is written that it is necessary for Elias to become first, or from Elijah to become first, before the coming of the Messiah. And people, of course, that read the Bible, misinterpret that. You always point that as a person, physical person that will appear. 2,000 years ago, it was necessary for this eon, this prophet of the day, to appear physically, because the whole drama or work that we had to do psychologically was necessary to represent it physically. So that's why Elias came and incarnated and represented John the Baptist. And Jesus came and represented the Messiah, which is, of course, Chochmah. And everything was represented physically in order for everybody to understand the initiation. But we had to understand and to read all these events in order to comprehend how this happens in each one of us. If it is written that it is necessary for Elijah to come first, Eliyahu, the prophet, that means that first we have to reach the level of human being, because God is not God of the dead, but of the living. Meaning, that you have to have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob within you, Eliyahu, in you, in order to, for you to receive the Messiah within you. The Messiah doesn't enter in dead because the Messiah is Chochmah, is Christ, the Son. And Chochmah, the Son, Jahavah, as he's called in, the, in Kabbalah, is not the God of the dead is the God of the living. So we have to put in activity those archetypes in order for us to become vehicles of Chochmah. And people think that just by believing in what is written in the Bible, Chochmah will come and incarnate in them, that the Christ will incarnate. And they are not even in the level of Eliao, of Elijah. Elijah, I repeat, is L-E-A-O, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Hanavit, a prophet. That's the complete work, the level of human being that we had to reach. And that's why it is written that uh, these three uh, patriarchs represent three uh, actions or move, uh, we will say it, events in each one of us. First, the change of name created with Abraham. Second, the change of place related with Isaac. Third, the change of action related with Jacob. And the first change, which is change of name, remember that this is represented in Abraham. This is Abram was his name. This Abram reminds us Aleph and Mem in the beginning and the end of the name. Reminds us Adam. So Abraham or Abraham is the same Adam coming from above. But in regeneration. In other words, this Adam that fell and that ate the fruit now is here represented in Abraham and is going to change. He's not going to eat the fruit again. Is going to act in different way in order to enter into the initiation, knowing good and evil. And that's why this Abraham has two children. Ishmael, which represents those children that come from orgasm, which are all of us in this, in this earth, whether we are Jewish, is uh, Muslims, uh, Christians, Buddhists, we are Ishmael, all of us. 
Only those that transmute the energy and the awake Isaac inside of us are the ones that enter into, uh, into the chosen ones. Because Isaac is Gebura, as you uh, represent, uh, remember. And Isaac is the second children of Abraham. But because he is judgment and has power, this power has to be given unto the innermost, unto Hesed, unto our own particular spirit. That's why when somebody reaches the first initiation of major mysteries, when that Isaac reaches the spinal column, that outcome of transmutation or the first initiation is absorbed by Abraham above. It is said that the divine soul becomes one with the spirit. <coughs> that is represented, of course, in the sacrifice of Isaac. Remember that Abraham is going to kill his only son. Jehovah Elohim, or the Elohim in other words, ask him, give me, my, give me your son. In other words, this is a test for, for, from, for Hesed, the spirit. Because he doesn't talk to Isaac and says, Isaac, I want you to be killed. I want you to be sacrificed for me. He doesn't talk to Isaac. He talks to Hesed, to Abraham and says, give me your son. This means that Jehovah Elohim wants only the pure blood because as we explained in the beginning, there is impure blood in Isaac. That impure blood comes from the liver because Isaac is Gebura, Samael is Gebura, and there is impure blood from the animal kingdom in Isaac. And the fact is that he gives birth or he engenders two children, Esau and Jacob. Esau is the first one, which is in pure blood. He's the son of Isaac, meaning the son of Samael through Isaac. But, as you remember, Samael sacrificed himself in saying, I don't want your Torah, give it to Israel, give it to the heart. And here is part of my light, take it. And of course, when he gives that, Isaac takes it. And when Abraham is going to sacrifice Isaac in the altar of sacrifice, that has a deep meaning. Karma is related with the liver. In many lectures, we stated that. So when you enter into the path of initiation, you have a lot of karma to pay. And of course, you have to pay it in steps. And the one that demands that karma to be paid is judgment, is Samael, because he is Gebura. But if Samael takes all that karma from only one struck, and then we will die physically in the first moment. Because Samael is, of course, in the animal kingdom, the ruler of death, the angel of death that kills Right? So therefore, if we enter into initiation and say, well, here I am. I commit many mistakes in the past. I have a lot of karma. Now I enter. My Isaac is raised, but it's related with the Geburah. So I'm going to be judged. So Samael comes. Or in this case, Elohim says to Hesed, you are mercy. Sacrifice your son. In other words, give me or sacrifice that evil blood, that impurity from your son. And being in the altar, when he is going to kill physically Isaac, that is an event that is happening in the initiation, in the life of any initiate. When you reach the first initiation of major mysteries, this is something that you have to pay, a karma that you have to pay. But if Samael doesn't intervene in that action, you physically die. Because the law falls on you and says, you fornicated, you killed, you steal, you broke all the law. So therefore now you are going to pay all what you owe. But then we will be like in the beginning, 
well, first initiation and I'm dead now. Of course, that will be unjust. And that's why that small light that Samael gave it to Yahweh Elohim in the story that we read in the Zohar, he said that the killing will be accordance to mercy. Accordance to Abraham. And that's why is Abraham the one that is going to kill Isaac. Mercy is going to be over Geburah, over the power of judgment. Meaning that the human being has to learn how to use power with judgment, with mercy, which is said. And that's why, listen carefully, it is written in the Sohar, that when Abraham was going to stab his son, to kill him, an angel stopped him. It says, don't do it. That angel is Samael. If that wasn't for that Samael, it's another sacrifice, Isaac will die. But Samael says, don't do it. And then the hand of Abraham stops the killing of Isaac which is, of course, the sacrifice of Samael in relation with these two laws, with intertwine the law of animals and the law of humans. So then, karma has to be paid anyhow. And then it says, don't do it. We are going to pay this karma of the first initiation in other ways. Behold a ram. The ram is that animal related with Aries in relation with the head. As you said, Adam is in the head. Samael is the head. Samael is that ram that is being sacrificed in behalf of Isaac. So here is how you see alchemically and Kabbalistically, how Samael sacrifices his power and his self in behalf of Isaac. First, he stops the hand of Hesed and says, don't do it, because there is mercy here through you, and we will pay this karma through this ram. In other words, the fire of the ram, the lamb, is the one that sacrifices within the body of the initiate because the ram is the fire of Arius. And that's the lamb of God that erases the sins of the world or erases the karma of the world, in other words, acting through Samael in a merciful way. If it wasn't for the mercy of Hesed, and then Samael will take care of this humanity, and in this very moment, this humanity will be dead. But there is mercy in the logo Samael, and that's why it's given us the opportunity to perform this cleanse of our blood through initiation, and to raise Isaac in a spinal column, which is Gebura, which is Samael, and of course, to cleanse also Esau, which is the impure blood. In Genesis, you see how Samael continues blessing and sacrificing himself for Israel. It is written that after Jacob takes the blessings from Isaac, thanks to Samael, because he sacrifices that, Jacob in the field of Yesod is fighting with a man. That man is, according to the Zohar, is Samael. Samael appears on, uh, uh, in front of him. But how this fight explain? Esau, which is the blood of the liver related with animality, is in the very sexual act fighting with the blood of the heart, which is Jacob. This is what happened to any individual, to any initiate, in the moment of the sexual act. 
Samael gives a sexual impulse to him, the sexual potency. And Esau, which is the animality that we have inherited from the animal kingdom, acts immediately there. What is what Esau wants? Esau wants to satisfy the animality, to reach the orgasm, the spasm. Wants to kill, because fornication is as to killing. But Jacob, the heart which is faithful to the patriarchs and to Jehovah Elohim, is fighting there also in the very sexual act. And this is how you, in the sexual act, you, f you, you sense your blood. And your very blood is the fight between Esau and Jacob. Or in the very blood in the sexual act is when Jacob is fighting against Samael. But he defeats him, meaning he doesn't eat of the fruit of the forbidden fruit of the forbidden tree. He transmutes the sexual energy and then Samael says, who are you? Because you were fighting with the forces of God and with the forces of men in the very sexual act and you won. Your name no longer will be Jacob, but will be Israel. And he blesses him. Thanks to that blessing, Israel becomes Israel. Thanks to the blessings of Samael. Thanks to the activities or the sacrifice of Samael, the Logos. So as you see, this is a fight. This is a struggle that everybody has to fight and has to have in relation with the legacy that we have from Samael. That's why it is written in many scriptures that Samael said, I am the creator, because he relates to the sexual potency. And many other things and in the Jewish mysticism, Samael is intervening in Isaac by stopping the killing of Isaac, stopping the hand of Abraham, and also intervene in the, with Jacob when fighting with him and blessing him after that. So this sacrifice of Samael, of course, is very deep. And his last uh, effort or sacrifice was done through Samael on the or, his son, in order to give the whole doctrine to this humanity in order for us to conquer his power and to give us the power to become human beings. That's why Samael is a creator of human beings or animals. It depends how you use the sexual force. If you reach the orgasm, you create just animals. You just multiply like animals. If you transmute it, you become some uh, children of Samael Sabaoth. Do you have questions? Yeah. When the congregation of the seven, when we said by Samael Sabaot in the name of Elohim Gibor, Ketihens and Ramelech, of course, we are invoking the forces of Chokhmah through Samael, which is Geburah, and to the forces of Elohim Gibor, which are the forces of Atziluth, which are the forces related with humans, with the law, in order to fight against Andramelech. Andramelech represents those individuals that are being born as beasts and that don't follow the doctrine of Samael, that follow the doctrine of Esau, animals, Ishmael, animals. Yes, another question? Of course, that's the way of the Bodhisattva, unquestionably, because the Bodhisattva itself in Sanskrit means that individual that becomes a vehicle of Chokhmah, of Christ. So in this case, of course, all the actions and works that we are explaining here relates to the Bodhisattva being born 
through the mysticism or doctrine written in the Zohar and written in, in Genesis. Because Exodus through Moses means the transformation of that human being into a superman. And that's where precisely the path of the Bodhisattva. As, as you said, I mean, this path of the Bodhisattva is nothing new. Moses wrote that in the book of Genesis in different steps, right? In a Kabbalistic way in order for us to understand the path. Unfortunately, people only read stories because each one of these eons or master of the day came physically to represent part of the drama. The last one that came in order to finish with that drama in different steps was Jesus of Nazareth, the master of Veramento, that represents the higher archetype. As we said, Moses is the body of willpower. You quoted earlier the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence taken by force. What does it mean that the violence in the kingdom of heaven by force? Well, violence, strength, is related with Gevura. As we explain, in the kingdom of the animals, you see a lot of violence. Animals behave instinctually. It's a lot of violence. And unfortunately, in the kingdom of the intellectual animal, is also violence. And that is in relation with Gebura. You see, now it's wars and rumors of wars. That is in relation with Gebura because we act and we take the force of Mars, of Madim, in the animal way, unfortunately. But when we know the doctrine, then the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And in which way they suffer violence? Well, in the way that we are spending here. We have to sacrifice the animality. Sacrifice all that animal which the story of the Sohar says that Samael sacrificed part of his light. That means, in our case, that the animal power of Samael, which is in our animal level, has to be sacrificed. And take that part of that light and to give it to the heart, which is Jacob. To give it to Isaac. All of that is a process of initiation in which heaven suffered violence. Meaning because the archons, the uh, eons, the master of the day, the rule, the will of Zamzara, we are taking forces from them in order to give birth the human being to the image of God. And this is how heaven suffers violence and the violent taken by force. Meaning that in a very sexual act, in the same way that Jacob took that blessing by force, by fighting against Samael, in the same way we had to take that blessing from Samael, fighting in a very sexual act, in order to transmute the sexual energy. And this is how you take heaven by force, being violent in that way. Well, Gebura relates to Ra. It is related with Ida. Remember that it's written that to, through Ida to Hava, to the sexual organ, is how we fornicate it. It's obviously that is Ra. And that Ra is very active in animals. Animals act through Ra, through Ida. They multiply through fornication. And of course, being us in the intellectual animal kingdom, we have to develop that uh, owl, as you said, right? The owl, the fear to God, that awe, the fear to God. With this knowledge, you have to, 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 to feel in a very sexual act that awe, that fear. The beginning of wisdom is that, to fear to reach the orgasm, but not a fear of egotistical fear. But that love that you developed through your sexual strength, which is Gebura, through your willpower, which is Gebura, you see? Because the monad has two souls, Gebura and Tiferet. And it's through Gebura how the man is being born 
in the beginning because Geburah is Isaac. This is the very beginning. And after that comes Jacob, which is Tifereth. But if it wasn't for Geburah, Ra, Samael, it's impossible to be born because we need willpower. And that's precisely the Ra or evil, which is misunderstanding in the Bible. Because unfortunately, from that fall, this humanity of intellectual animals utilize that force of Geburah in the wrong way. Killing wars in the name of religion, in the name of politics, in the name of the race, etc. That's animality. To develop that justice inside of us in the human level, we have to defeat the animal level, which is ruled by Samael and Rahabiel. And of course, this is how we will understand what Ra, evil, is in relation with that, the tree of knowledge. Because we don't know good and evil. To say this is good or to or say this is evil is easy. But to know the good or the evil and the evil of the good is very difficult. That's only related with gods. Only gods know the good or the evil and the evil of the good. As Samael, who is a Logos. He acts in the animal kingdom through Ra, sexual desire, because this is the level of the intellectual, uh, irrational animal. And we learn in this level not to fornicate, not to kill. But uh, we have free will. You see? Free will. And that's related with Geburah. Free will. The will that acts in a sexual act. When we said Ra, we are referring to the Hebrew word Ra, which is Resh and Ayin. Ra means evil, or the, or the way in which the individual acts mechanically in the will of Samzara through animals. But the Ra that we practice in Gnosticism is not written with Ayin. It's only the letter R, as in Israel. You see, Israel has that Ra in the middle of the word. Israel. That Ra is the Ra already transformed, taken from Ra, from Geburah, which is the, the, the Ra Ajin, Resh Ajin, that's the Ra evil, taken by Jacob, take that Ajin out, and it's just the R, which means knowing good and evil. That ride the solar light, referring to the superior forces. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,